He'll chop your energy bills in half, balance the grid and make it greener. Sounds like my kind of guy. Or rather, my kind of 300 kilowatt hour intelligent battery. This is Max, the latest offering from Ally, and it is the perfect energy storage solution for businesses, from factories to building sites to pubs and shops. And this is the Everything Electric show. If you want to see, touch and feel Everything Electric in real life, join us at one of our fully charged live shows around the world. Next up, we're coming to Canada, so get your tickets today. Electricity demand is set to double over the next 25 years, and if we did nothing, that would put us in a bit of a pickle. Because if you imagine that transmission lines are like roads for electricity, if we double demand, that'd be like sending loads more cars down squiggly pothole roads. But fortunately, we can siphon off a little bit of electricity and store it for when demand is really high. And that has the effect of smoothing out peaks in demand, making the grid a little bit more resilient with less pressure on it, but it also means that we can use renewable energy whenever and save an awful lot of money. And in fact, thanks to things like negative pricing events where you get paid to use electricity when there's an excess of renewable generation, it can become pretty lucrative. So the way that we can save consumers money on their bills is by our batteries working together with the grid. And that means working with the suppliers, but also the distribution network to be able to store energy when it's cheapest and most available. With the advent of renewables, with more wind and more solar, we have an abundance of generation of electricity, but not necessarily at the times when it needs to be consumed. So our batteries work intelligently to be able to store that energy when it's available at a cheaper price. And then ultimately the consumer can use that at peak times to then power their facility or their building. The consumers we're targeting are factories and uh, SMEs. These are businesses that really have been hit hard by COVID, but also by the energy crisis. They don't have a price cap when it comes to energy prices like residential customers do, and they've been paying up to one pound per kilowatt hour. So we have to use technology in a way that can help them not only lower their bills, but also play a role in the energy transition so that they can have greater resiliency, they can help the grid, and that our batteries can work together to help optimize and make their business more successful. Max is 300 kilowatt hours. That's the equivalent of about four electric vehicles worth of energy. That could power 40 homes for a day or a factory for two days. All of that squeezed inside here. And so you can see that 300 kilowatt hours is made of four electric vehicles. And actually these ones here are scrapped Tesla Model 3 long range batteries, which have been repurposed inside this um, battery storage unit. And what's so cool about this as well is that it means that Ally can be completely agnostic to different chemistry types, to different battery pack types, and make sure that these batteries are used for as long as possible. We actually define our battery packs as new to life. And we procure our battery packs from multiple different places. Um, we are actually working with four of the largest EV recyclers in the UK. And these cars are typically taken from cars that are either written off um, through a very minor repair. But I guess there's still the question of, you know, how do you know that they're absolutely safe? Sure, so we've developed a really robust and in-house process um, that we're working with the recyclers. So it starts with um, an on-site test where we physically have developed a, more, a testing equipment where we bring up the site, plug it into the pack, we check voltages, any error codes, the state of health of the battery. We're also looking for any uh, damage, mechanical damage, and we're also assessing the health, uh, assessing the history of the vehicles. We then bring it to site and we have a full on-site testing procedure where we take it into our high voltage battery testing container. We charge it all the way up to 100% state, uh, state of charge and then discharge it all the way down to 0% state of charge. And we're mo monitor, um, monitoring a bunch of data parameters such as temperature and voltage. And only then are we satisfied that it's safe enough and robust enough to go into our max. But are they being used as intensely as they would if they were inside an electric vehicle? Yeah, so what we're finding actually is that our systems are charging and discharging the battery packs at a much lower rate than they originally were designed designed for. So we actually have the capability, um, along with our uh, data models, to really extend the life of the battery pack far beyond than the typical sort of 10 to 15 years that a car would have on the road. 
So a couple of other bits and bobs about the Max here. Now, first of all, it is so colorful and how refreshing is that? Because we're so used to seeing very boring black or white boxes and this injection of color is very much welcomed. It's 3.5 tons and that was a very deliberate choice because it means that it's fairly transportable and fairly towable. So you could take it to those really remote locations. Imagine building sites or powering something like Glastonbury. But it also means that eventually it will be able to have that DC-DC inverter so it could provide super fast charging in places where there may not be a grid connection. So obviously, as well as storing energy and being able to use it at peak demands, it can also provide backup power. And that's incredibly useful. Imagine you live in an area where there are a lot of blackouts or brownouts and super hot or super cold weather. This could kick in to make sure that your factory or business can keep going super, super seamlessly. And in fact, I think we're gonna demo it now in something called island mode. So in a moment, we're gonna turn off this building's connection to the grid and you'll see that happen because all of the lights are gonna go off. So, Ahmed, we're ready with the breaker. The grid connection is now off and we're gonna switch the power so that it can run on max instead. So, I get to press the magic button. It's waking up, it's making a couple of noises. It's worth noting that this is a prototype and in the real version, there would be an instantaneous switch between the grid and Max. But in the meantime, please do like and subscribe to the Everything Electric Show. And there we go. Now the building is running completely from Max. Here we've got Lorenzo, you can tell us what is actually going on and how much power we're drawing from Max. What, what, what can we see here? Yes, yeah, so on the screen, you can see everything to do with the battery. Um, every parameter, the state of charge, and how much power we're drawing from our unit. Oh, so how much are we currently drawing at the moment? Three and a half kilowatts. Three and a half kilowatts of our building. Wow, um, okay, so yes, I understand that there is, that's very much a hardware, this is very much batteries, but it is more complicated than that, and all of these batteries are connected to the cloud. Why is that significant? So we monitor up to 250 parameters from all the batteries, that gives us ability to monitor the safety and feed it into our optimization algorithms to make sure that we're controlling the asset in the most optimal way. Repurpose batteries, saving money, greener and more balanced grid, all incredibly exciting stuff. But I think the thing that's really interesting here is the fact that this will be available via energy as a service. So via a contract that's much more similar to a mobile phone contract where you bundle a certain amount of kilowatt hours rather than paying thousands and thousands to actually own the max. But it also then means you only pay for what you actually use. And that has many of the benefits because it's more predictable. You, people already consume their energy on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis with their energy suppliers. So it becomes far more manageable and understandable for customers to be able to look at how much they've used, how much they've saved, but also to implement the savings for them. But the really interesting thing that Energy Storage as a Service manages to do is think about how people can be more efficient with their energy, but also cooperate with others. So we're really interested in exploring energy communities and how we can make batteries work together smarter to be able to help each other better manage their energy, but also deliver cheaper energy to everybody. So one example could be if you have an allowance every month for your energy, actually, if you don't use it all, could you gift, say, 20, 30, 40 kilowatt hours to someone who needs it more? And actually, it becomes a far more flexible way to manage your energy, but also work together so that we can all afford cheaper energy and help the energy transition in the process. And we believe that we can do that at scale by addressing three separate markets, the industrial sector, the commercial sector, and residential. The commercial will be for the high street, and residential will be for every type of home, including flats and apartments and terrace houses that today are left behind in the energy transition, but also the affordability of battery energy storage systems. Please support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy. I'm looking forward to Max's little sister, the domestic version of this energy storage system, so that we can all start scooping up wind and solar and start saving money on our energy bills, and without having to pay loads of money to do so. Energy as a service, 
it'll make energy hustlers of us all.